Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. This is part five of my new series, The Bible Says. Okay, so we established that um, uh, at birth, every human is born with certain birth defects. Uh, it's a, it's a, a disease that's inherited and passed down from generation to generation, generation uh, and it's common to all humanity, and that is the sin problem and the death problem. We talked about in the last video how the sin problem has been solved by Jesus paying for our sins on the cross, but that leaves us with the death problem. We're still all doomed to die. So let's talk about now, is there a solution to the death problem? Romans 5, 1, uh, 5, 12 says, by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. It's universal. Everybody uh, has death waiting for them. The Bible says that it is appointed for man to die once and then the judgment. Uh, it's inescapable, in, uh, unavoidable. From the time we're a small child, we become aware and learn that someday we're going to all die. Second Corinthians 1 9 says, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Of course, this, this is Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and he, he writes, we had, that's past tense, because in this case, uh, for these people, the death sentence has been removed. It's been pardoned. It's, they're no longer under the death sentence. But we all have a death sentence on us from our birth. Job 34, 15 says, All flesh shall perish, and man shall return, shall turn again into dust. So uh, it's clear throughout the whole Bible. It's clear from uh, history. It's clear from all of our life experiences that we're all doomed to die, unless something's done about that. Of course, throughout the history of the world, people are trying to find the fountain of youth, the secret to eternal life, but... It is obvious and it's clear right in the Bible what it is. So let's solve the death problem now. Romans 5.17 says, By one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So uh, this verse is just simply telling us by one man, which is Adam, uh, death reigned. Death was passed to all of the descendants of Adam because of Adam's offense. Um, I believe at the fall in the garden that the genetic code in humanity was uh, uh, changed. Uh, uh, I believe that uh, man uh, developed a disease called death. Ease means, it's the root of the word easy. Uh, life should be easy. It should be painless. It should be without having much effort required of us at all. That's ease. Disease means the absence of ease. It's difficult. Life has been difficult for all of humanity. The Bible tells us because of the fall, life would be difficult for all of men ending in a final coup de grace, death. Uh, but it says, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Uh, so because of Adam, 
we've all inherited this birth defect, this disease called mortality or death. And, but by a, one other man, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, uh, we have, uh, because of God's grace, we have the gift of righteousness and the gift of life everlasting offered to everyone. And Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So men, uh, our sins are paid for, but still we have death waiting for us. And, and Romans 6.23 tells us there's two possibilities. Uh, there's two outcomes that are possible. Uh, death, or which is the default. Uh, the default setting for all of us is death is, is waiting. Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life. So God is offering a gift, and that gift is eternal life, and it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This might be the most famous verse of the whole Bible. And it, it clearly uh, tells us that there are two possibilities. Uh, you will either perish or you will have everlasting life. And this will be determined by what you do with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you believe in him for the gift of eternal life, you receive it. If you choose not to believe in Jesus Christ and receive the gift, then the, the, the default outcome for you is not life everlasting, but death. John 5.24 says, When we believe on Jesus, we have passed from death unto life. I passed from death unto life in December 1986. The moment I put my faith completely in Jesus and believed his promise that uh, I have eternal life through him, uh, then at that moment I passed from death. Death is no longer waiting for me. Uh, the, uh, instead, life everlasting is my outcome. Second Timothy 1.10, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to us. So he abolished death uh, for us uh, and, and instead brings life and immortality. Immortality, uh, there's a commonly um, the word immortal and eternal are uh, misused by most people. Uh, they're not synonyms. They're not interchangeable. Um, eternal means that there is no beginning and no end. Uh, there's only one thing that is eternal. The uncaused cause, God. God is the only thing that is eternal. He has no beginning and no ending. All of creation, time, matter, space, humanity, everything had a beginning. And we're all created, we're creatures. And so therefore we can never be eternal, but we can be immortal. Even though we have a beginning, we can continue living forever and ever, immortally. Uh, and that's, that's uh, available to us by faith in Jesus Christ. So it says, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to us. See, most people think that man is innately, inherently immortal. Uh, that uh, man has an immortal soul. And after we die, our souls must live forever because it's immortal. So we're left with a situation as well how and where will everybody live and people think well the good people will live in heaven and the bad people will live in heaven live in hell for, but they're both going to live forever and ever the only difference is where and the conditions they're living in 
uh, that's a that's a logical uh, conclusion if the person believes that everybody is innately immortal. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that we are innately um, mortal. And only way we can change that to immortality is by believing in Jesus. Uh, so it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 54, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. See? Uh, corruptible means that uh, the law of entropy, the second law of thermodynamics, takes its toll on everything and everyone. Eventually, uh, our, um, all matter breaks down and, uh, and our bodies will break down, wear out, and um, turn back into dust. Uh, and uh, that's that's um, uh, corruptible. We are corruptible, but it says we shall put on incorruption. Putting on incorruption means that this this corrupting of our bodies and decaying and returning to the dust will not happen. It says, and this mortal shall put on shall have put on immortality. So this mortal is talking about the default condition of humanity. We are innately, inherently mortals uh, without immortal life. Uh, and, and But it says we can put on immortality by putting our faith in Jesus. Revelation 21.4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, praise Jesus. Wow. If a person understands this gospel message, that we're all in a helpless, hopeless situation, doomed to death, and yet God loves us so much that he would intervene and solve our problems of sin and death. And he offers eternal life as a free gift to everyone. If you purse really understand that, you should be jumping for joy. You should be saying, praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How could you stop praising Jesus and giving all the glory, all the credit to our great Savior, God Jesus? So now you can see that Jesus solved the sin problem by paying for our sins on the cross. That's universal. Everybody's sins are forgiven. But that doesn't mean everybody has eternal life. You only receive eternal life as a gift from Jesus when you put your faith in him to receive it. So, what exactly? The next step is, what exactly do we have to do to get this gift of eternal life? What exactly is required of us? Well, we'll discuss that in the next video. Thank you for watching, and bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.